Hey guys, uh, it's raining again in New Jersey, like it has for the past month and a half. So uh, I figured I'd take this opportunity to, to give you a, a rundown on the cameras that I, the action cameras that I use, um, like GoPro, Insta360, as well as the mounts that I use. Uh, the mounts are, the actual mounts themselves um, are called small rig mounts. Um, there's a bunch of different ones that I use um, to mount there's a couple mounting places, right? There's the tail, the high part of the tail on top of the rudder. There's also a point of view from the struts uh, where it looks like uh, it's kind of a, th a three-quarter um, angle. Um, and there's also one on top of the cowling that I use. And all three of those, I use um, a 360 camera. So the first thing, and it's kind of the boring part of it, is the FAA and what they consider uh, acceptable. Um, unfortunately, like most things with the FAA, um, there's really never anything perfectly black and white, right? Everything's uh, open for interpretation. So yeah, you could you know, it's a temporary mount and that's fine because um, it's not considered a major change to the aircraft or anything like that. But if one of these cameras comes off the airplane and hits somebody or, or damages property or you have an issue with the airplane and the camera gets stuck in, in the rudder or jams a flight control, uh, you're going to have a very hard time, um, I guess, not getting in trouble, uh, for lack of a better term, potentially getting violated. So Flight Flix puts out a really good, there's a really good video um, and just a really good rundown of, of the legalities and the FARs as far as cameras, uh, cameras go. So I'll put that up, you can take a look at that, um, pause it to see it, or take a screenshot of it. But ultimately, um, you could be as safe as you want, but if something happens, you're responsible. Uh, and that's why um, for the strut mount that I'll show you, um, that that's really secure and I'm pretty confident in that and I would fly that for hours on end um, over you know people densely populated area that that's not too much of a concern but the one on the rudder um, which actually is just this right here and the camera goes on top it screws in there and you tighten on top of the rudder um, that one is a little it looks a little sketchy uh, so that I usually go to like a grass strip private grass strip put it on top of the rudder and take off, do, do the, stay in the pattern, don't fly really over any houses or anything, and, and then I'll, when I'm done, I'll take it off and then fly home. Uh, that's what I do now when I first started using it. I, I didn't do that, um, and I actually flew from here, South Jersey, up the Hudson River to the Tappan Zee Bridge, all the way back down uh, with this on, and it, it didn't move at all, so it, it is really secure, but again, it's just a single point attachment, and it's, it's tightened, and it, it, I mean, it could come off, so. Um, I did fly most of it over water, so if it did come off, it was going in the water. Not a big deal, but uh, just kind of something to think about because ultimately we're responsible. Um, so the two cameras that I use are Insta360 and GoPro. Uh, full, dis full disclosure, I had kind of a, I don't know, watered down um, sponsorship with GoPro. And I have a pretty decent sponsorship with Insta360. Um, but I promise you I will give you the best advice and, and not be biased. So if you're going to do, um, let's say, in-cockpit videos or stuff where you don't want to use the, the 360, uh, GoPro is, I think, hands down better, uh, especially with the max lens mod. And what that is, is just a little thing that increases the field of view. I think it's like 155 degrees. Um, the only caveat is it limits resolution. I think the 2.7K, which it doesn't matter because most of the things you see on social media are, are 1080p, so that, that's more than enough, and it limits it to 60 frames per second. I'll talk more about that later. But if you're gonna do 360 stuff, uh, I started out with the GoPro Max 360 camera, and then I got the Insta360 1X2, and this is the 1X3. Um, and it's not because they're paying me, it's because I think for 360 stuff, this I think is a much better camera. Um, the battery lasts longer. There's a lot more things you could do with editing, which is kind of neat. But one of the, the simple reasons why I think this is, is much better is because how a 360 camera works 
is, and you'll see, I'll, I'll show you the mount, but you have to have some kind of selfie pole, let's say, and it, it records everything, right? It's two lenses, records everything, and then edits out the pole that it comes from. The only trick is if, if it's slightly off angle um, and it's not completely straight with the pole, then you'll actually see it and it, it could ruin the video. And I've had a couple of really, really killer videos, but you could see the pole and it just, it really kind of messed it up. Um, and why this is better, it's a much simpler mount. You just screw it straight like this. So it's, you really can't have it um, on an odd angle. But the 360, for most of them, you have to screw it into something that kind of turns like this. Um, and the problem with that is you'll have it screwed in. And the problem with that, if it's on a pole, it's, especially if you're flying around, uh, you know, I'm doing 70 miles an hour, but if you're in a faster airplane, it's very hard for it to stay completely straight. Um, so a little bit of wind could kind of move it just enough to be able to see the pole. So that's, that's one of the things that's a, that was a little frustrating with the Max. Um, and I, I do think the, uh, the dynamic range is a little better on, on the Insta360 uh, and the battery life. But, you know, if you showed me two videos of the, the GoPro Max and the Insta360, I probably wouldn't be able to tell you which one was which. So, but again, this is what I like to use. It's, it's a little, I don't want to say it's smaller, but just the shape of it, I think, is a little, a little better to, to deal with. Um, so, again, in the in cockpit shots or where you just want a straight field of view, I'd say GoPro 9, 10, 11. And then for the 360 stuff, I'd get the 1X2 or the 1X3. Um, and how I mount the in cockpit stuff is I use one, I'm gonna put links for all the all the brackets and all the stuff that I use down below, but uh, I just use a little uh, suction cup mount. I originally started using one with just a single suction cup, but you know, two is better than one, right? So. Uh, and the cub, unfortunate because it's got a, a plexiglass roof, so you just stick it on there, um, put the camera, and you're good to go. And I also put this on the cowling, which I'll show you how I did. Uh, and the cowling one is tricky. Um, I shouldn't say tricky, but that you got to be careful of because obviously the propeller and the windscreen. But this. On top of the cowling, I'll safety wire it through the cowling, and there's, you know, there's, I don't want to say there's always a chance, right? But there's a very, very small chance that this, this mount is going to go anywhere. Um, when the suction cup's on there, I'll run a, either zip ties or safety wire through that uh, camera mount through the cowling and the cowling clips, which on the cub is super easy. Obviously a lot more difficult on some other airplanes, but on the Cub it's really easy. Um, with safety wiring and zip ties, you'll see I use zip ties a lot on the, on the struts for the 360 camera and zip ties are, are pretty much the answer to everything. Um, the tail wheel one is the uh, Flight Flix, it's actually called the Bananas tail wheel um, mount, which is really cool. Uh, we got together probably about a year, year and a half ago to, to figure out something where you could get the, the back, it's almost like a chase view, which is really cool because you could see the elevator rudder, you could see everything, um, so that's cool. And that one uh, works great. The only thing I'd be careful with that one is that I've had this happen. Uh, if you don't tighten it enough or make sure it's secure before you go, I've had it kind of lean down and it looked, fortunately it was just grass, but this was dragging on the grass. And if that was pavement, obviously you're gonna ruin the camera.
and these are pretty expensive. I think, you know, I, I don't even, uh, I don't know, it's four, let's say four to 600 bucks for, for one of these. These are a little cheaper, probably closer to three, 400. I have so many of them, I don't even know. Um, and the mounts, and the brackets are actually, are, are really, really inexpensive. And I'll show you those, uh, how I use those. Um, as far as like photography stuff goes, I'll make a separate video with all the like the mirrorless lenses that I that I use, the telephoto stuff. But as a general rule of thumb, if you're going to go out flying, especially with these cameras um, that that don't do all that well of a job picking up you know shadows and highlights, uh, is just go shoot early in the morning or late in the afternoon, the golden hour, right? So the sun sun rises, you have an hour of just really nice, soft, perfect lighting. And then an hour before the sun sets, same thing. You have a, a really nice um, soft lighting. I prefer a sunrise because nobody else is out there. And you know, you'll see the mounts on the airplane when you're taxiing around. I mean, you look like an idiot. There's there's poles and cameras hanging everywhere. Um, so it's just one of those things. I've had you know guys in the hangar waving, thinking that I left the um, tow bar on the back of the airplane, but it's just a selfie stick. So. Um, but it works really well and it's cool and it's a lot of fun uh, and, and I've gotten some really, really good pictures. I remember initially uh, I, had, I was on a chat group. I think it was like an airline chat group of one of the guys that was into photography. And I'm like, hey, what, you know, these 360 cameras, they look pretty cool. You know, what can you tell me about them? And they were like, ah, oh, they're kind of gimmicky. They're kind of stupid. I wouldn't waste your money. Um, so I kind of held off for a little bit and I said, you know what, let me, let me just try it. And I'm glad I did because I got some really, really cool um, pictures and, and videos that have ended up, um, you know, GoPro used some stuff uh, for not only for their advertising, but their GoPro awards that they posted, which was really cool. Insta360 Insta used some. I've had a couple pictures in EAA, AOPA, uh, Air and Space, so it's really cool. Um, and another, another tip is if you want to take pictures, you can, but it's, it's my advice is to just take video of everything. And then if you want to frame that picture, take a picture, just screenshot that frame from the video. Uh, the resolution is high enough. All the pictures that I've had published have been a screenshot essentially of the video. Um, so so I don't have to worry about losing all that resolution because if you set it up with pictures, chances are you're probably gonna miss the, the perfect shot where if you're using the video, you have the whole entire thing that you could you know, pick the, the perfect frame. So um, I, I would do that. But the one thing I will say, I think Go, GoPro, does a, GoPro does a better job with their microphone than Insta360, um, or that may just be the settings that I have on this, but it's just, you know, if, if you're concerned about audio, um, I'm really not concerned about audio, but if you are, you might want to look at that too. Um, and I'll also show you, they both have GPS, so you've seen some of my videos where they have the, the GPS overlay. Um, this has overlays for it. Uh, the GoPro has its own overlays for it. And then there's a third-party app that I use. Um, I think it's called Telemetry for GoPro, but you can use it for GoPro, Garmin, Insta360, where it's got all these different gauges that, that you can add, which is pretty cool. Um, slightly gimmicky, but it actually, it's a good tool if you want to lay out everything out. Uh, you can look at, you know, your airspeed, your altitude, your bank angle, your coordination, all that stuff. So that's pretty cool um, to, to add that to your, to your video. For the, um, for the GPS data to work, you don't have to keep your phone connected to the camera the whole time, but you do have to initially connect your phone to the camera. Uh, to, I guess the cameras use the phone's GPS, so you have to establish that connection first, otherwise you won't have GPS data. Uh, and like as far as videos go, uh, you know, um, just try different things, put, put it in, in different places. I mean, I, I would have never thought I would get such cool shots from certain angles, um, but you know I, I did. You just you got to try different things. You got to be careful about it where you place it. Um, like for example, on the strut for the Cub, there's obviously the aileron cable there, so you want to make sure you don't, you know, with the with the rubber mount, use that and and not be able to move the aileron. Just kind of something to look out for.
Um, for the shot off the strut where it's like a front three-quarter view, um, that Flight Flix does have a complete kit that you can do um, for a single and for the double strut. The double strut obviously makes it a lot easier. Um, the only, I don't want to say problem, but the only um, issue, I guess, with that is how far out you put the, um, the camera makes a big difference on how the airplane looks because ideally the ultimate spot for, for my airplane is a beam, the propeller. So even shots like this, the camera is no further than the propeller. Um, where the, the flight flicks metal pole, it's, it's a lot shorter, so the airplane uh, looks a lot more distorted. And, and I'll kind of show you what that looks like. But the wing looks tiny, the engine looks huge, and it just, it's kind of disproportioned. So, you know, each airplane has this kind of a, the perfect spot where you're going to want to put the mount. Uh, I have figured it out pretty good for, for the Cub. It's, it's pretty close to about three quarters of the way up on the strut. Uh, and a beam and propeller. Uh, and you can also, what's cool is you can actually just, you know, take the camera um, that's usually out here, let's say, and then just reverse it and have it pointing in the back and you can get really cool shots like this. So what's, you know, each, each spot on the wing, uh, both where you put it on the strut and where you put it as far as distance goes is gonna give you a different perspective. So really, I just, I encourage everybody to just try a million different things because um, you'll get some, some really cool, unique, perspectives that that you didn't think was possible so so what what I use for um, the three front three-quarter shot is a audio boom carbon fiber boom pole they use it on sets or whatever to put a microphone and you put it overhead but uh, this is what I use it's, it's lightweight it's really rigid uh, carbon fiber when I got it uh, I'll show you I'll get you the link it was like a hundred bucks with inflation now it, it probably cost more than the cub um, it's adjustable, right? So I think it's like 13 feet. Um, so whatever works for your airplane, you can figure it out. Just extend it a little bit, see what it looks like. Extend it further, see, you know, see what works. Um, so it's nice to have that, that flexibility uh, with this thing here. I know it looks like a medieval, medieval joust uh, on the airplane, but uh, it works really well. So, and it's great because it has the, um, the screw mount already attached to it. So you just screw on the pole. And that's kind of what I was talking about earlier. Um, the 360 camera, if it's perfectly aligned like this, it'll edit out the pole. With the GoPro, you have to mount it a certain way, and if it's slightly off like this, you're, you're going to see the pole at some point. Um, it's got to be perfectly straight, perfectly aligned. So it's, it's not that it's not possible with this. I mean, it is. I've gotten great shots of it, but it's just a lot easier. You don't have to think about it at all with the Insta360 that just screws right on, and it's completely um, aligned with, with this. So. Um, and this is one of the mounts here. Uh, this is set up for the reverse, the back of the airplane, but you can see the strut. Two of these, I mean, this is it right here. This is the whole setup, this tiny little setup, and you can get great, great shots. Uh, and this goes like this, and, I'll, and I'm going to show you the setup for this. Real quick with this top of the rudder mount here, um, 
This one works because there's the actual frame of the rudder. There's actual metal post right here that I could, I could tighten this uh, pretty good on there. Uh, if this frame wasn't here, I obviously wouldn't do it because this would punch right through the fabric. So obviously that's something you, you gotta be careful of. Um, just use rubber pads, styrofoam, um, you know, an old t-shirt, sweatshirt, whatever, just to kind of cushion the fabric. Um, I don't have any indentations here, but this, this gets really, really tight. Uh, so you don't want to obviously damage the paint or even worse, the fabric. And it's really secure. Like I said, I've gone up the Hudson River and down with it. Flown for two hours and it hasn't moved, but I, I don't really use this one much anymore. And if I do, I'm at a private grass strip and I'm, I'm staying right inside the pattern and not, not really going outside of that. Just because it's a, a single single point mount where everything else is uh, secured by two mounts and safety wired and zip ties, all that stuff. I, I can't really do that with this one. Uh, also, real quick, I didn't mention this before, but most of these work via Wi-Fi, so you can press record uh, from the cockpit when you're flying. But I've had a couple times where, for whatever reason, it couldn't connect, and I had to land somewhere to press record. My, my advice, press record and then go flying. All right, here's the mount where I get, I get asked most uh, how I do it. Um, it's just a little, little bracket that goes on the leaf spring of the tailwheel uh, that has an adjustable screw mount that screws right into here. This is a light, I don't know, this is probably three feet pole, I guess it's pretty light, aluminum. And you just screw the Insta360 on here, and then that's it, you just screw it in like this. Um, again, the only thing you gotta be careful for, careful of is make sure, obviously number one, it doesn't get in the way of the rudder, and number two, uh, it's secure, really, really tight, because if not, a couple hard landings, especially my landings, and this is gonna kind of fall down on you and drag on the ground. Uh, if it's grass, it's not a big deal. I've had, I've had plenty of those, but on the pavement, you're gonna destroy the camera and lens. So I'm um, just gotta watch out for that. Uh, that's pretty much it. Um, Again, these 360 cameras are really cool. They're a lot of fun. You get some, some great uh, viewpoints. Uh, and the other thing too, is when you're editing these, I'll show you how to do that, but there's a really, really easy way to edit these that a lot of people, and I didn't know for a while, I thought you had to go in and add all these key points. Uh, Cause basically what happens is with the 360 camera, you record everything and then you go back and reframe it. Uh, meaning you go back and, and, and you adjust where you want the camera to, to portray where it was looking at, uh, so to speak. Um, so how you change the viewpoint is not by clicking all these different key points and adjusting the frame. It, that's really cumbersome and it takes, it takes a long time. Um, GoPro's got a really simple way of doing it. Just open up the app and you'll click that uh, keyframe. It's that diamond with a circle in it. Press that once and go up to where the top right where the three dots are. Click on over caperture uh, and that kind of allows you just to move your phone to, to record the video. You, you squeeze and pinch like you do a normal iPhone to zoom in, zoom out, and then just move your camera. Uh, let's see to the, there you go, zoom it out. Up, down, move your camera to the right, it moves right, move your camera to the left, it moves left. It's pretty easy and super quick and takes really no time at all. Really cool, you just basically hold your phone um, like this you know, you press record and you just move your phone. And as you're moving the phone, you're looking around at all the different angles and that's what will be recorded as the video that you could send out. Um, I'm probably not explaining it correctly, uh, but hopefully you get my point, but I'll, I'll show you what I mean. It's a lot easier and a lot less time consuming than adding all these different key, um, key frames, which just looks very, when the keyframes move, the, the movement or the pan looks very robotic where with the, uh, when you use your phone, just you move your phone, it's really natural, it's really smooth. You can kind of add a little uh, floaty floatiness to it so it looks like a drone's following you. 
uh, some really, really cool things you could do. And it's just so much easier and so much less time consuming. Uh, so people ask me, oh, it must take you so long to edit those 360 videos and then put them up on Instagram. And it, it literally takes 30 seconds. I mean, or it takes as long as the video is. If you have a 10 second video, you know, press record and move the phone around for 10 seconds and, and there's your video. So um, really easy to do, show you how to do that. And again, any other questions, uh, shoot me a message, I'll, I'll be happy to help. It took me, it took me a little bit of time to, to get used to um, editing this stuff or kind of learning, figuring out what works best, but uh, I have it somewhat nailed down now, so I'd, I'd love to, to help you out. All right.